Hi everybody, Army P here for Exploraminate. Uh, if you've been watching this series, you know that we kind of ran into a dead-ended bug that um, unfortunately was able, it blocked us from making claims, which pretty much stopped the Let's Play right in its tracks. Uh, earlier today, patch 2.01, a hotfix came out. Uh, it didn't address this bug in particular, but uh, I was kind of hoping that maybe that by loading it, it would um, resolve this issue. We can may maybe carry it forward on the Let's Play. It does not look like that's the case, which is a bit of a shame. So instead of just leaving on this Let's Play on kind of a sour note, I, I just wanted to talk a little bit about like what's got me frustrated with Stellaris at the current moment. What do I think about Patch 2.0 and Apocalypse? And um, and why I'm maybe so frustrated at this point, you know, overall. And to do so, I think we kind of got to go back to Stellaris 1.0 when it launched. Um, this is my very first um, Paradox title. I really had no preconceived notions of what Stellaris was going to be, besides the fact that I knew that Paradox was a studio with a reputation of making exceptionally good um, strategy and simulation games, that they had a very aggressive DLC policy, and they continually updated their games for a number of years, four, five, and six years in some cases. Uh, so when Stellaris 1 came out, I was very much pleased with the product that came out because it was exactly what I wanted in a 4X type game. It offered a sandbox type idea. It offered a lot of dynamic, interesting things to do in the beginning of the game. There were flaws, don't get me wrong, but because I didn't have any conceived notions of what I was expecting in terms of its, like, you know, um, maybe on a diplomacy side, because so many Paradox titles have been so heavy on their diplomatic type relations between, uh, some, and some of their historic titles, right? Crusader Kings, EU4, as an example. And what we saw was a continued improvement right up into patch 1.5 when Utopia came out, and Utopia really did change the game entirely. Uh, it added a lot of things that the game needed in terms of like a faction system and goal games, which was lacking a little bit. Mid to late game had been criticized for being a bit light in Stellaris up to that point. Um, even though 1.5 and Utopia added a lot, I had mixed feelings about it initially because it was quite obvious that all these systems came into it but hadn't been hadn't been fully patched through yet. How can I put that? They hadn't put a lot of thought into the actual mechanics of some of the things. I remember being frustrated of how long it took for me to be in, to build some of these endgame structures which were offered in Utopia. In fact, I think in my Let's Play, I had to actually physically stop recording and just simply let the ticker go because I, it took so long to not only build the actual structures itself, but to actually save up the minerals for them. And then we got patch 1.6, which came out of the... Um, came out very quickly after patch 1.5 and the whole premise of it was that it was going to be a a balance patch a patch that's going to um, polish some of these rough edges that we had been seeing in patch 1.5 but instead it came out as a hot soupy mess it completely broke the game in a lot of ways it was rushed way out the gate my sus suspect was to release it on Stellaris's first birthday and it broke a whole bunch of things. And from that, the team at Paradox, especially from the Stellaris team, came out and apologized and said that they were going to do better. That it was rushed and that they apologized. And um, I was very frustrated because, you know, this is a game that I really enjoyed and I wanted to enjoy it. But the fact of the matter is, is that Stellaris and uh, Paradox, they charge premium prices for their games. It's not cheap to be a Paradox fan. If you own four or five Paradox titles, you could be paying two to three hundred dollars a year, uh, depending on how many um, Paradox titles you own, uh, just to keep up with DLC. So with that kind of high price, I expected a a better launch. So I wanted to believe that when 2.0 came out, that we were going to see that kind of um, that promise come into effect. Um, but what we did find in the meantime, I kind of don't want to go too far ahead. 1.7, the patch was strictly to do with um, multiplayer, which is something that I haven't done a ton of in my Stellaris games. But what we got instead was patch 1.8. And 1.8 is and 1.9 concurrently, because the two of them don't have a lot in change of a lot of differences in their patch notes. What we got is an incredibly polished but flawed game. 
it is easily my most favorite version of Stellaris. And if they were to stop, you know, um, stop with continuing patches and support after 1.9, I could honestly say that it was in the top five 4X games of all time. I'd put it there personally. That's my that's my opinion. But it was a really, really polished game. It was fun. It was dynamic. Um, and coupled with the fact that there are so many talented mod makers out there, it became a game that you could not only easily recommend, but you could get lost into as well. So I had a lot of really high hopes for patch 2.0. I read every dev, dev diary. If you guys follow me on the Explore Monate forums, you know for a fact that I was posting dev diary and, and my thoughts on each one through the continual process and I was pretty shocked as we kind of turned into 2018 just so quickly they were intending to um, launch 2.0 and there was a lot of different mechanics all coming together the rework of the border system the rework of the tech tree system reworking of combat in general all of these things even as I've played 2.0 were great additions and for the most part rather polished um, I think that there are some things that they could work on when it comes to you know patching some of these things through in terms of you know I think that the border expansion is a bit too heavy for tech and and unity costs I think that there's some things that they can shore up here and there but generally speaking a very very good job in fact even though it's not as polished as it should be this fleet manager in the future is going to be the cornerstone of how we're going to be playing Stellaris in fact I'm hoping as you know if things turn around for Paradox and they get 2.0 into a better state everybody is going to wonder how the ever played Stellaris without this incredible tool. It needs some for it fixes, don't get me wrong, but it's great. I like how combat plays out, I like the rework um, on weapons and shields. All, all of these things are good things, even the starbase system um, I think is great. Um, you know, you can really have a lot of, there's a lot of diversity, a lot of choice in your starbases, and I think all of these things are just, just great. They're just great additions to the game. Um, I really didn't care too much for uh, the faster than light changes. I'm not going to beat that dead horse because everybody kind of knows. Everybody has their own opinion now if it's a good, if it was a good thing or if it was a bad thing or whatever the case may be. My personal opinion is, I I almost always played with warp and then I eventually started to enjoy star lanes or hyper lanes, whatever you want to call them. Um, and I just didn't go back because I ended up getting a mod that uh, increased um, the capacity for star bases and defensive positions and after I played that with that combination I didn't even bother you know going back to warp it just became a whack-a-mole situation where I enjoyed hyperlanes better now the reason that I'm frustrated right now with Stellaris was because the one thing that is through 1.0 to about 1.5 that has been a thorn in its side is their war system they had the war score system, which when it launched had a frustrating situation where you couldn't take more than three or four planets at a time. And then it became this, and then of course after the war was over, if you were able to acquire those four or five or four, three to four planets, depending on what patch, um, you had to wait ten more years to do it again. So it became the end game, and when it came to conquering the galaxy, it became a huge slog. But again, that got fixed in 1.5 and got better by 1.678. And eventually 1.9 to the point where um, I really enjoyed war I like the way that the system worked but hearing that they were planning on increasing the you know the strategic value of war had me really excited but unfortunately what they've implemented seems like two very two very interesting systems on paper that haven't been implemented very well at all practically speaking the first one is the claim system, which I can't show you, of course, because my game is bugged. But the reason that this is interesting is because you could see here as I went to war with the Lagan Shows Compact, I could claim certain systems that I want, systems and planets, and I can kind of declare to them that I feel that they're mine, and then I'll concurrently go to war with them. My first major complaint with this is that I can't physically see what I've claimed and what I cannot. There should be some type of UI or map modifier or map mode that lets me know, you know, what I've claimed and what I haven't. Or what's been claimed against me. It helps me understand where I need to defend. That's not currently in the game, and it's a bit of a mess trying to remember what you've claimed on an easy, 
uh, functional way of looking at the galactic map and to know what's against or what has been claimed against me the second one is the war exhaustion system which they've already said that they're going to be changing right now as it stands as you go to war and your war exhaustion goes up as soon as you hit 100 percent whatever you have conquered previously during to that war and claimed and whatever that they have been claimed against you and they had currently own changes hands and the war's over for 10 years this necessarily wouldn't have been a bad system had it not been for the fact that um the war exhaustion system does not go up you know or goes up way 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 too fast in fact to the point where within one small engagement the war is over additionally it's not explained well to the player what exactly has happened concurrently not being able to see what you've claimed very easily or what's claimed against you can mean that there's an exchange of planetary systems that you're completely ill prepared for it's just not enough information to the player especially someone like i said in my case who has never you know uh, played another previous paradox game that this claim kind of this claim system seems a little bit bizarre so that's kind of where i'm at I have talked almost exclusively about 2.0. Uh, some of the changes they made for, you know, the additions for the DLC Apocalypse are good. Um, I don't think that the Marauders are working as intended. They tend to, if I were to hire them, let's say, and wanted to attack anywhere that cross my galaxy, they'll actually wreck everything along my galaxy getting to the enemy that I hired them for, and then back again. They're going to fix this. They know it's on the, on the sheet. The Planet Crackers and the Titans are nice too. Don't get me wrong. But it's typically content light for a high price, which I don't mind as long as the base game's where it's at. The base game, as far as I'm concerned, needs a lot of work. It needs two more patches. I want to play Stellaris 2.2. I do not want to play Stellaris 2.1. And that's a shame because this is my favorite 4X game. And it pains me to say that. But the fact of the matter is, if you're enjoying... You know, if you're enjoying 2.0, that's great. I hope you have all, all, a ton of fun because this game can be a ton of fun. I've had a ton of fun playing it. I've had some of the most dynamic and interesting 4X games I've ever played in this game. You know, I have a lot of memories of unusual battles and situations, unlikely foes and allies, all dynamically playing out in this kind of large 4X slash strategic slash RPG slash, you know, simulator game. What's frustrating me more than anything is that it took so long to get to 1.8 and now I think that with 2.0 we've taken a step back and it's not because of design, it's because of implementation. And that just really bothers me because I don't have the time to wait. You know, I, I don't want to sit around and do what I did between patches, you know, uh, 1 to patches 1.8. I, I don't want to sit around and wait for the game to get better and continually play it and enjoy it. I want, I want to play the finished polished product that I think that everybody who is a Paradox um, fan and owner of their of their games should expect at this point. Uh, I don't know if we're ever going to get that. It just seems to be the nature of how Paradox works. They tend to think that you know it's totally fine to update something within two months of releasing a bit of a, a janky and broken program. And that's fine for them. I'll end up still playing it when it's polished. But what I won't do in the meantime is is tell anybody, you know, to go and play it. I'll tell them to be very cautious and wait. So, um, again, this is going to be the last episode. I kind of wanted to let you guys know what I thought personally. I got pretty upset on our forums if you tend to follow that way. I'm, you know, it, just the frustration that I've had trying to play this game and play this Let's Play. I will intend, if the game turns around and I'm sure it will it seems like they've already got some ideas in the background in the back of their head of how they're gonna look at the uh, for a balance patch and I'll probably come back to the game at that point but in the meantime I'm probably gonna put this on the back burner because if this was any other company this was for axis or amplitude I would I think that's only fair that you would treat them I would probably say the exact same thing I'd say well because that's why I'm waiting for when it comes to um, Endless Space 2. I keep waiting for that game to um, to come and grab me and tell me the time to play. I played it on the free weekend. didn't grab me. But I want for, I wanted to. I'm waiting for that moment. And that's exactly what I'm going to do with Stellaris. I'm going to wait for that moment where somebody that I really respect their opinion on the game in general comes up and says, 
All right, Army P, it's time. Jump back in. So everybody, I'm sorry to say that this game is pretty much pooched. The Explorination will end to get rise again, but hopefully it'll be... Um, the challenges we face as a nation will not be ones that will be on a technical level, but instead of it'll be on some awesome interstellar and dynamic, you know, challenge that we have through game mechanics instead. This is Army P. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. I really appreciate it, and I appreciate our Patreon supporters and our active four members. Take care, everyone.